you welcome to New Finance in our Paris chapter. We've got a pretty straightforward agenda tonight. We're going to have three presentations. So our, our first speaker is Olivier from Lingua Custodia. Good evening, everyone. So I'm Olivier, and uh, I basically to give you, before starting on Lingua Custodia, just a little bit of uh, background story. I've been working in the financial sector for 20 years and in the asset management in 15 years. And in 2007 and 2008, my team was particularly in charge of dealing with all clients' queries. And you can imagine there were quite a few at the time on a daily basis, even you know, big institutional clients. Uh, and then the main topic we had is how do we communicate, how do we handle crisis communications uh, in seven languages, uh, making sure that everyone is informed exactly at the same time and all this in a very, very quick turnaround. And it is at that time that an idea came up, which is there is really something to be done in terms of technology for translation, particularly for what relates to financial information. And that's how, in fact, uh, Lingua Custodia was born. So, the company was founded by two finance professionals, and what we, the, the, hard, the hard core of the company is really on financial machine translation. Basically, what we do, just to, to summarize it very quickly, everyone know, knows Google Translate, and what we do is a Google Translate, uh, but which is much more detailed, uh, which means that you go and you select a language couple, and you go and you select a type of document, a type of financial document you want to translate. We spent uh, two and a half years uh, to develop so in, uh, in research and development processes. The company was founded in 2011. Uh, and we have developed uh, machine translation engines uh, that are specialized uh, to translate, uh, for example, just fund prospectuses or just kids or fund annual reports. And those are different softwares each time. And uh, that's the hard, the, the, the really the core of the company. And around all this, uh, there is uh, a need that appeared within the financial institutions, particularly within the investment houses, uh, that relates to, okay, we have, uh, because of the crisis, we have more and more uh, transparency obligations towards our clients. Regulation is, tr is, uh, is really uh, costing us a lot of money. How do we manage uh, to uh, not to have our translation costs that are exploding? Just to give you a quick idea also in terms of market, uh, the translation uh, market has grown by 10% every year since the year 2000. And the financial part of it is a big chunk of it, and particularly because of what happened after the crisis as well. So what we, uh, our business proposal is to approach investment houses and to propose to them different things, depending on the type of issues they are facing. Either they are looking for uh, market intelligence. They want to enter a new market. They are going to go and look at the domestic market, and they need to translate everything which is done locally but in a cheap manner, you know, and just in order to understand. So this is where machine translation can be fairly useful for them to define uh, what products they should sell in that particular domestic market. That's one type of use. Another one is when you have time pressure. So you have uh, uh, an RFP team uh, who you have a commercial office in Paris, let's say. You receive an RFP in French from a big uh, pension fund, a French pension fund, uh, you uh, need to translate everything in English, send it out to New York or London, there uh, they answer in English, they send it back to you in English, you need to retranslate all this in French and all this within a very short time frame. If you send that to an external translation agency, you will anyway have to rework it a lot. And basically what we can do with that technology is that based on all of the past requests for proposals that this company has answered, we're going to create a customized machine translation engine that will take into account all, basically, their, their own language and their own terminology, and they will have access to this tool on a SaaS model. So this is basically how, how it works. And then finally, the cost control aspect, there are a lot of uh, pressure for all the, 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 the global COO of uh, investment houses to control their costs, particularly to control their translation costs. And there, uh, if we offer also a, a, a more general service, uh, which goes from uh, a proper audit of what are their translation processes, so looking at pure internal processes, to the development of databases 
of what they translated before, so that's their language assets, so that's why we're called lingua custodia, we are basically the custodian of the language of, uh, of the asset managers, but for their linguistic assets. Uh, because so in that manner, if they take control of all those language databases, they won't need to pay again for what they translated before. And at the moment, this is what happens. You integrate uh, machine translation in there, and you put a nice uh, workflow into it, uh, and you are able to save roughly between 25 and 30% of your overall translation costs. And I can tell you that at the moment, this is something that matters uh, for all those investment houses. So there, I've already answered all this, uh, explained all, all those aspects, and this is basically just to go, uh, to go around the type of service we can uh, offer, advisory optimization, language database, automation. We also can select uh, translation providers because we know quite well the market now, or we can also handle the full uh, translation management. To give you an idea also of what does it do, you know, what is customized machine translation, especially in the financial sector, versus uh, a generic machine translation. There's an example here. Uh, we took a text out of uh, a French prospectus and translated this in English through a generic machine translation tool and through a tool that has been customized uh, specifically to translate prospectuses. So obviously, if you use this engine to translate uh, uh, your notice on how to use uh, uh, your kitchen uh, your kitchen tool, it would be terrible. Uh, so, but uh, the whole idea is uh, to really have customized machine translation. This is something fairly new that uh, is now appearing on the market and that we're pushing towards the financial institutions. And that's basically it. Here I have a, I have a little, uh, I have a little uh, demo that I can show you. So uh, you start from, a, <coughs> in that case, it's a kit, so Key Information Investors Document, a DC in French, uh, for which we also have uh, developed uh, customized engines. Uh, so that's the document in French for a particular, uh, a particular kid. You need to translate that in English. So you go to uh, our web interface. <coughs> And this is how you can, uh, after that, so that's the uh, access. I did it on a little movie because usually uh, you're more uh, secure on the Wi-Fi connection and so on. So, but all this for those of you who are interested, actually, we don't see very well on. Uh, over here, it's okay. It so usually, the resolution is a bit better. But basically, you access an interface. Uh, where you can choose the type of language and the type of engines uh, that you have access to. So each client can have access to different type of engines that may have been developed for them specifically or for one of the standard engines we have uh, to translate uh, to translate a specific type of documents. And there, given that, the, I don't understand why we can't, we can't see it the, a bit better. No, no, mais ça marche, ça marche pas là, en fait. So, um, so you see it's fairly simple, you just download your document and then it goes through, it's translated and then you extract the results. So it's as simple as this. So the whole, whole, the, the whole work in there is the setup of the engine, understanding the need and how to, uh, how to have it developed. But, uh, so, and, and also uh, this, um, this platform can integrate, there are two things, there is the language databases that may have been built for a specific client, if a client wants to use certain, a certain terminology. Uh, this first goes into this uh, language database and then for what is not, when there, is no, there are no matches for, some, for the sentences in there, it goes to the machine translation tool. So you have two steps. And then after that you can, uh, you extract your document and that's it, basically. So in terms of market as well, uh, we've launched, uh, so the, the, as I was telling you, it has taken us quite a little a little bit of time to develop an expertise and a team to develop this. We raised funds several times to, uh, to, to do this. Uh, and we are now, uh, at the, we've just launched commercially, the platform is ready and we launched commercially uh, at the beginning of, uh, end of September, beginning of October. So we are in the full uh, <laughs> launching, uh, launching aspects. Our targets are obviously investment houses because we have really developed engines specifically for them, but also translation agencies uh, who are working for the financial institutions because for them that's a way to improve their margins. And also uh, another, uh, another type of market I was not expecting, which is in fact the press and the media. Had, uh, we, we had quite a few contacts with uh, Les Echos or La Gefi, um, 
who are interested also on the fact of translating a part of their articles uh, in English, because uh, for them they can sell those, uh, those articles, and the fact that it's specialized uh, in the financial domain is for them uh, a big plus. So, if there's no other question, I will, uh, or if there's no question, is there a question? What is your pricing model? So, uh, we, have, uh, we have a price, it's uh, basically by subscription. Uh, for the engines that we have already developed ourselves for some type of documents, like what I was mentioning, phone prospectuses, phone kits, phone annual reports, those type of things, the engines are already there, and if there's no need for customization, it's a simple subscription model per month. Uh, for clients, for one, one type of product? For one type of engine, yes. And then for clients uh, who have a specific need, like when I was referring to an RFP team earlier on, there there's a setup cost because you need to create uh, first the, the language database, then you need to create the engine to create the software. Uh, there's a setup cost and also there after that a subscription cost. And also, uh, machine translation engine is like wine. When it's young, it's not uh, that, that good, uh, but it, it uh, gets better as it ages. So it needs also to be what we call retrained on a regular basis, particularly if it's a client who comes with little amount of data. And we create it at the beginning. So we, we create the engine, then they see what needs to be improved, and we refeed it, and there's a continuous improvement uh, model in that manner. Practically speaking, if I want to get my kids being translated, yes. how much does it cost? It's uh, we're, we're talking if if it's already the, if just you know if it's just accessing uh, accessing this engine you know, we're talking about 500 euro per month for for oh, unlim uh, unlimited use. So, Thank but you. I insist on the fact this is machine translation. You still need you still need to do proofreading after that. Huh? So the idea is that uh, compared to a generic engine, you know, that refers to the example I was showing before. Uh, compared to uh, a generic engine uh, where you may have uh, you know to work uh, or, or a global document where you may have five hours to spend on it. The idea is that here with that you have one hour to spend on it, but you still have one hour to spend on it. Huh? I actually have a question. <laughs> Um, it seems like your product is already ready for other languages because it's a core product. Uh, you have, I understand, to put the documents um, uh, from foreign countries if you want to sell it abroad. But for example, for the people who are going to view the video afterwards and are living in the UK, can they already use this to, for example, translate French documentations in English for their own asset management in the UK? Oh Yes, yes, of course. So what we are working on is we're working by language couple and by type of documents. So French, English, English, French, uh, that's uh, very well covered for those different type of documents. Uh, we just launched uh, German to English. Uh, English to German is a bit more complicated. Uh, and Italian to English and soon English to Italian as well. And we're, going, we're looking at Spanish now as well. So there are, there are all those different combinations. After that, it's also depending on the needs uh, that we're going to see. We have a prospect uh, who's been to asking us about Zulu, you see. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, after that, it's a question of finding the data, finding someone who can help us in the testing uh, and setting it all up. Hein. The, the, the raw material is the data that you have in, in, uh, in different languages. So for prospectuses or kids, it's fairly easy because you have a lot of public data. So we could go and retrieve all prospectuses on Earth uh, to create the database and then to train engines. Uh, and after that, uh, if, if it's for a specific type of contract and those type of things uh, that are specific to a company, then the company needs to work with us on that because it's not accessible as such. But, uh, Okay, and, and so you said the two types of things important are the languages and the documents. Do you yeah. already have foreign documents that are ready to be used uh, in your uh, like current version of uh, Lingua Custodia? What do you mean foreign documents? Like documents that would be requested, you know, like the, the kit, but the English one. It's probably well, it's a little the bit same. different. The kit, the kit oh, okay. is uh, the kids are the same in all countries, so that's why we chose that as well. Okay. Uh, and in terms of prospectuses, we do prospectuses from investment houses uh, everywhere uh, at this stage in Europe because they follow the same type of pattern. Uh, and also it's true that uh, if you look at uh, for financial documentation uh, like Swiss ones, uh, language starts to differ. Huh? You don't talk about l'actif du fond, but la fortune du fond. Uh, so, uh, so everything is a fortune in Switzerland. So uh, it's, uh, but, but uh, yeah, you know, our market for us uh, is, you know, I'm, I'm going to the UK uh, tomorrow. 
uh, to meet with investment houses there uh, because they, they have those needs and uh, it's the same type of documents. Okay, you thank you. Uh, very short question. Uh, what would be the cost for a translation like of a kit uh, without your uh, application? So ah you bah said it's 500 a, a, euros. A, a kit, if you want to translate it from scratch, you go to a translation agency, a minimum it's 50 euros per page. Here I'm talking about a price per month. And with unlimited use. Yeah, but how, how many times do you have to translate your kids? Uh, so kids, uh, it depends on once, your number no? of phones. So it depends on the number of changes you do. Uh, but that, that's the example of for kids. Uh, prospectuses, uh, you also change also uh, twice a year. We have an engine we're working on for fund reporting. Mm -hmm. uh, the fund fact sheets, where it's monthly. Uh, it's all those, type of, uh, all those type of things, you see. So it's true that some engines will have less. Uh, so it would be the same price for the uh, kids engine as for the uh, reporting After engine? After that, no, we are, we are going to modulate depending on the, the complexity of, uh, of the engine. So, and, and there we're talking about ready-made products. What I'm really trying to, uh, uh, to push is to the personalization. It's, uh, it's also uh, for uh, an investment house, they have specific requirements or specific type of terminology. And they may want to translate prospectuses, but with their own words. So we will take, we will tweak our own prospectus engine for to, so that it becomes theirs as well. So and there, that's a different type of pricing. But in terms of you know, in terms of uh, in terms of cost uh, for investment houses, translation is a very big cost. Huh? So it's. Uh, it's uh, is there someone who okay. has yeah. translation in your office? Sorry, sir. Is there someone in your office behind the help for translation or is it purely automatic and uh, uh, no one can know who has written what? So, uh, so here we are talking about the confidentiality of, uh, of data. Uh, it's all uh, it's all automatic. Huh? No one, uh, no one, unless we are being asked uh, to do the proofreading or to do the, the full correction and to provide the full service for translation. But besides that, uh, it's uh, it's all going through. Uh, automatically, there's not a human person who is checking all the documents. Uh, in terms of uh, access, it goes through our server. So if we want to, we have access to the data. And then it's a question of sending a non-disclosure agreement or a type of confidentiality agreement. Then if you have a client who really do not want any possibility of us seeing what goes through uh, the translation engine, then we need to go and set up the whole infrastructure on their own server. And then that's uh, that's there. And then we just come as a, a client service after that to make sure that it works. And uh, and that's all. That's a, that's a way to do it. It requires big infrastructure. Well, it's very, <laughs> in terms of calculation power, it's very complex. Uh, the training of one of those engines uh, requires billions of calculations. It's all it's all I did not say it. It's all statistical based. The way it works in the back. Okay, Olivier, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you.